a blunder by Anton Chekhov. Ilya Sergeyevich Peplov and his wife Cleopatra Petrona were standing at the door, listening greedily. On the other side, in the little dra drawing room, a love scene was apparently taking place between two persons, their daughter Natashenka and the teacher of the district school, called Shipkin. He's rising, whispered Peplov, quivering with impatience and rubbing his hands. Now, Cleopatra, mind. As soon as they begin talking of their feelings, take down the icon from the wall and we'll go in and bless them. We'll catch him. A blessing with an icon is sacred and binding. He, could, he couldn't get out of it if he brought it in the cart. On the other side of the door, this, this was the conversation. Don't go on like that, said Shubkin, striking a match against his checked trousers. I never wrote you any letters. I like that, as though I didn't know you writing, giggled the girl with an affected shriek continually peeping with herself in the glass. I knew it at once. And what a queer mind you are. You are a writing master, and you write like a spider. How can you teach writing if you write so badly yourself? Hmm, that means nothing. The great thing in writing lessons is not the hand of one writes, but keeping the boys in order. You hit one on the head with a ruler, make another kneel down. Besides, there no there's nothing in handwriting. Nikrasov was an author, but his handwrit handwriting is is a disgrace. There is a specimen of it in his collected works. You are not Nikrasov. I should love to marry an author. He'd always be writing poems to me. I can write you a poem too, if you like. What can you write about? Love, passion, your eyes. You'll be crazy when you read it. It would draw a tear from a stone. And if you write your real poem, you'll let me kiss your hand. That's nothing much. You can kiss it now if you like. Shubkin jumped up and making sheepish eyes, bent over the fat little hand that smelled of egg soap. Take down the icon, Peplo whispered in a fluster, pale with excitement and biting his coat as he prodded his wife with his, with his elbow. Come along now. And without a second de second's delay, Peplo flung open the door. Children, he muttered, lifting up his arms and blinking cheerfully. The Lord bless you, my children. May you live, be fruitful and multiply. And, and I bless you too, the mom brought out, crying with happiness. May you be happy, my dear ones. Oh, you are taking from me my only treasure, she said to Shubkin. Love, my girl. Be good to her. Shubkin's mouth fell open with amazement and alarm. The parent's attack was so bold and unexpected that he could not utter a single word. I'm in for it. I'm spliced, he thought, going limp with horror. It's over with you now, my boy. There's no escape. And he bowed his head submissively, as though to say, take me, I'm vanquished. Blessings on you, the papa went on, and he too shed tears. Natashenko, my daughter, stand by his side. Cleopatra, give me the icon. But at this point, the father suddenly fell left of weeping, and his face was contorted with anger. You ninny, he said angrily to his wife. You're an idiot. Is that the icon? Ah, saints alive. What had happened? The writing master raised himself and saw that he was saved. In her flutter, the memo had snatched from the wall the portrait of Lazetchikov. Lazechnikov, the author in mistake for the icon. Old Peplov and his wife stood disconcerted in the middle of the room, holding the portrait, uh, portrait aloft, not knowing what to do or what to say. The writing master took advantage of the general confusion and slipped away.